stands see in journey with us to learn and grow. I'm so happy we are coming to journey through Acts chapter 10, especially after today's first reading. That draws our attention to the fact that there is a purpose for Christianity, a purpose for life, a purpose for spirituality, a purpose for the journey with God, and the purpose is eternity. So it's not just earthly. No, the ministry is not just earthly. It's not about getting healed, getting restored, getting marriages and getting babies, getting money and getting protected from evil spirits. No. If that is the reason why we are preaching, then there's no need for Christianity. But there is life after this. And that is why I love today's gospel. Very short, but very deep. Yes. Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Some women who accompanied Jesus yes. in his ministry. The description of the women. One, they were healed. Two, they were resourceful. Three, they were so important that people could name, know them by names. And yet, they could follow Jesus ministering to the needs of Jesus with their own resources. So they had everything life could give, yet they remain Christians. Christianity is not for the poor, the sick, the aged, the downtrodden, and those who are at the fringes of society. Jesus comes to restore us so that we can serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. Mm -hmm. And that is what Paul, uh, St. Luke makes us aware through the prayer of Zachariah in Luke chapter 1, after the birth of John the Baptist. Yes. Freed from fear. And he has sent a savior among us that freed from fear and saved from the hands of our foes. We might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. So we are coming to meet another person who was rich, powerful, influential, respectful, and honorable and still needed Jesus. So I don't need Jesus because of the things I lack. Mm. I need Jesus because of eternity. Okay. Because of heaven. He came on earth so that he will reconcile man to God. That is the first purpose of Jesus' ministry. That we will be reconciled to God. If we are reconciled to the Lord and that is ended, then we can think about other stuff. That's why I said we should first seek the kingdom mm. and its righteousness. After that, you can seek the second. Secondly, you can seek something. Sure. Thirdly, you can seek something. But first seek the kingdom. And it's righteousness. And we are happy Cornelius is a very good guide yes. in this journey. Especially on a beautiful, nice, cool <laughs> Friday. <laughs> when we thank him for saving us with his blood. So we journey through us of the Apostles, chapter 10. Talking about the first Roman mentioned in Acts for being good. No, in the entire <laughs> in the entire gospels. The Romans were presented as persecutors of Jesus. Yes, you know Herod, we know Pilate, we know the Sahendrin and all. But today we are coming to meet a centurion who is not just begging for healing for a dead son or servant. A centurion who is not just looking for some miracles from Jesus, mm. but a centurion seeking salvation. salvation. Yes. So what of the apostles chapter 10? At Caesarea... There was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms liberally to the people, and prayed constantly to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those that waited on him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Beautiful. 
let us describe this man. The words are simple, but they are very technical Jewish words. He mentions the fact that he's a centurion. That means he's a soldier. He's an army officer. And to be a centurion is to be having between 100 and 600 soldiers. A minimum of 100 soldiers under your care. Minimum of 100 soldiers. In our state, that would be more than a district commander. If it was to be in the police. Because district commander will not have police to 100. Mm. It would be less. Yeah. So it's getting to a regional command of a sort. So he's a very powerful man we are talking about. Then he says he's a God-fearing man. man. That technical word used there, God-fearing means he loves the Jewish religion. Mm. He loves the Jewish culture. He obeys all the rules, but he doesn't want to be circumcised. Okay. Normally, the Jews will not call you a Jew. They will call you a God-fearing fellow until you permit circumcision. So there's a block he is not permitted to enter the temple for, uh, uh, presence to worship. He is not allowed to even go to the court of the Gentiles because he is not circumcised. Mm. So this good man, who is generous, who is charitable, who is God-fearing, is obeying the Ten Commandments. And you know, interestingly, circumcision is not part of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> worship God, no other God. Make no images and worship. It's not, it's not part of the Ten Commandments. And yet he's pre prevented from getting to the Jewish background. And then this man has a siesta. No, the ninth hour is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 3 p.m. is the ninth hour. Okay. So he had siesta, rest. The need for rest. Eh? Yeah. We all need it. <laughs> sure, very important. Then what happened at the siesta? Did he pray before sleeping? Was he waiting on the Lord or what? Then at siesta, this man gets a vision. And the detailed nature of the vision frightens me. Mm. God mentions the name of Peter, the location of Peter, Peter. <laughs> and the activity Peter is doing, the house, including the house number, and the <laughs> landlord. I mean, so detailed revelation from the Lord. You no, know, people have denied Cornelius, access to the temple of God. But God has not denied him access to his personality. Okay. Interestingly, not everyone who will go to the temple will discover God. Yes. Some of them will go and will not even recognize the presence of the Lord. You remember Jesus was presented to the temple and the high priest and the scribes never noticed. Yes. It took the three wise men to draw the attention to the fact that a king has been born. Boy. And then when they have researched, they discovered he is born in Bethlehem and then they didn't even chase him. They allow soldiers to rather go and chase and kill him. And then the family took him out to Egypt through the instrumentality of God. And God is able to give these details to somebody who is prevented from entering the temple. The limitation man places on us has nothing to do with the blessings God instills for us. Great. Let me repeat it. The limitations humanity places on us has nothing to do with the blessings God imposes on us. Mm. The one God blesses can never be cursed. Mm. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 says, when he opens the door, mm. no one can close it. Close. And when he closes it, no one, no one can, can open it. it. So please, stop crying over the blocks people are placing on your way. Mm. Let us allow God to be the one we revere. Fearing God was the most important thing. Let us be God-fearing. He was God-fearing. He was generous. And he was devout. Three. Means he read the scriptures. He prayed. And he was charitable. He had no pastor. He had no priest. He was not permitted to enter the temple. He was not allowed to worship with the Jews. He was not permitted to journey with the people of God. Yet he was blessed. Yet, the Lord revealed himself to him. Yet, he had a deep revelation. He didn't need a revelation from another person or a direction from another person. God directed him because he had no one to do it. And his story is similar to the three wise men. They had no Bible. Yeah. They had no temple. They had no leader. The Lord gave them the stars. So, at any stage, God has his own unique way of leading his people. And when he woke up, 
among the people he sent, there was a devout soldier. And that is very insightful. That in this so-called secular profession, mm -hmm. in this so-called oppressive regime, the Jews didn't want to even see eye to eye with the Romans. Mm -hmm. But in the land of the persecutors, in the midst of the enemies, there were God-fearing people. You don't need to be afraid. Even those who are fighting against you have elements of divine fear. And deep within the camp of your enemies, there are people who fight for your progress, for your good, and for your prosperity. So we are seeing another conversion experience. We saw that of Paul. Paul was also a devout Jew. He was accepted as a Jew. He was promoted as a Jew. I was empowered as a Jew. We see another God-fearing man not accepted by the Jewish faith because he doesn't want to be circumcised. And in the same way as God received Paul, God is about receiving Cornelius to tell us that culture is not a hindrance to religion. To religion. Okay. Our culture is not a hindrance to religion. And let us know that Christianity is not for Europeans. Mm -hmm. No, we have this bad expressions most of the time when we see people doing the wrong thing we want to say Christianity is an imposed culture of Europeans nice. and that is very wrong because even at the time of Jesus we have idol worshippers among the Europeans they had occultics among the Europeans you remember what Philip did to the uh, magician Simon yes. that man was not an African he was not a Ghanaian he was not an Ashanti Yet the Lord intervened. So idolatry is not a culture. It's a distortion of worship. Whether it is done by Africans or by Europeans, any form of idol worship does not meet divine standards. God does not like it. The Romans are naturally idol worshippers. Naturally. They have more gods than any civilization on earth. And Cornelius was staying in Caesarea, the headquarters of idol worship in the then Jewish world. And in the headquarters of idol worship, he was God-fearing. Mm. So don't use Asantistas and Accountants as a cover-up to say, ours is idol worship. No. Jesus remains the way, the truth, and the life. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. So that's the few things we pick as we continue to the next stage of the journey. Great. So verse 9. The next day, as they were on their journey and coming near the city, Peter went up on the house top to pray. <laughs> About the ninth hour, the sixth hour, and he became hungry and desired something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell, he fell into a trance and saw the heaven opened and something descending like a great sheet let down by four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This happened three times. And the tin was taken up at once to heaven. Now while Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision which he had seen might mean, behold, the men that were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Mo Simon's house, stood before the gate. That's beautiful. We will come and continue. We want to look at 
the two sides of the wishes. One beautiful thing which is happening now is that Peter will not have his vision until the men were ready. Okay. And that's the first thing we want to draw attention. It was when they were almost reaching the community that the Lord revealed what was about to happen to Peter. So Cornelius had it a day before at 3 o'clock. Peter is about having it at 12 o'clock. The sister hour is 12 o'clock in the okay. afternoon. A day after. And Peter is going to have it simply because there is a journey. There is a step. There is a move done by the people who were sent. At times, God will not act on your issue until you make the first step of obedience. Mm. The obedience of Cornelius and the obedience of the people he sent became the reason why Peter had his vision. If they had not come, Peter wouldn't have received his vision. Now, in the vision of Peter, there is a revelation I want us to get attentive to. The Jews had a list in Leviticus chapter 4 and the following about clean and unclean animals. Things that could be sacrificed to God and things that could not be sacrificed to the Lord. And the implication was that Anyone who offered an unclean animal will be cut off from the people of God. So if you ate that kind of animal, it meant you cannot be saved. Mm. Interestingly, the vision of Peter comes from heaven. And the vision from heaven has a package. Mm. And the package of heaven has the things people are refusing to sacrifice to God on earth. Mm. So God was possessing the things People were denying him. You can't deny God anything. I brought this up because of ministry. Some of us think we can punish the church by refusing to minister. Mm. I am a preacher. I am a singer. I am an usher. I am a lector. And what have you? Because of what has happened to me, because of some treatment method out to me, I will stretch them. <laughs> Jesus once reminded the Pharisees that if they stop human beings from praising him, stones okay. will rise up and praise him. We can't deny God his deal. He has the right to what he likes. The second thing, all of the life of Peter, he has denied himself these delicacies. All in the faith of, all in the name of religion. He wouldn't eat them. All in the name of religion. But God told him, I have never told you not to eat them. You made it yourself. We have been placing a lot of limitations on earth. Because we are doing well that become flesh, we won't go deep into some of the limitations we are placing on ourselves. But at times, we, we punish ourselves too much. Or in the name of religiosity. Let us be led by revelation. Mm. Let us be led by God's word. Let us be led by divine principles. Otherwise, we will become slaves in our own father's house. Then, the vision of Peter makes Peter perplexed. Is he supposed to? So what caused the perplexity? His belief system. God is giving you extra freedom. And you are perplexed. Why? He doesn't want to be different. He wants to remain like all the other Jews. He wants to look like his own people. He doesn't want to be tagged as being the old one out. But let me tell you, you cannot be used for God until you agree to be the old one out. Mm. Not in sin. But the old one out in divine obedience. Mm. He was going to be the first Jew to eat the so-called unclean animals. The first Jew to enter a territory nobody has done. And now he holds the record as being the first Jewish minister to have entered the house of a pagan. And now we refer to this as a point of 
reference in ministering to other people who are not of our culture and of our background. I think the Church of Pentecost has started ministry to the Fulanis. Okay. And it is a serious and good thing they've started doing it. Entering territories nobody wants to. God will want us to become old so that others will find salvation. In the later part of Paul's life, Paul will say, I have become all things to all people so that at least I can win some for Christ. So now two visions are about to meet. Yes. The carriers of a joyful mission and the carriers of a perplexed minister. Interestingly, Cornelius is not worried that he needs another step. He's devout, he's religious, he's charitable, he's God-fearing, and he's ready for the next step. Peter is perplexed, not ready for the next step. <laughs> no, Peter is more powerful. No, that's the challenge of religious leaders. We become so formal, and we limit the flow of God in our formalities. May we be inspired with this encounter of Peter and Cornelius, so that we also open up to the other dimensions the Lord won't take us to. Amen. Amen. So please let us continue. Verse 19. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down, and accompany them without hesitation. For I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he called them in to be his guest. The next day he rose and went off with them and some of the brethren from Joppa accompanied him. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You see, these guys were trying to speak nice words so that they can convince Peter. Yes. But before they started speaking nice words, the Holy Spirit has already commanded Peter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are sent by God, don't stress yourself with nice words. The Lord prepares the way. Many ministers get shivered when they are given ministerial opportunities in territories that look dangerous. Now look at it. Strangers are coming to fetch poop hmm. to a strange land for a mission. And so normally they will be a, a bit anxious, a bit worried, a bit disturbed, a bit everything. <laughs> um, the, a bit everythingness. The Lord has already prepared the grounds. And this should also remind us that after a successful ministration, don't think you are powerful. Mm. Possibly these people will never get to know that God has already instructed Peter to follow. Yes. And they may go believing in themselves that their nice words made Peter follow them. Yes. Hmm. We are just vessels. God is the minister. And don't stress yourself to compete. Hmm. Just obey. obey. Trust fully. Allow the Lord to lead you. Be you. He has made you great for greater works. He who called you to ministry will glorify you in his own due time. You don't need to excel over any other minister to find relevance. Ministerial relevance is not in becoming everywhere. It's in becoming obedient at every stage. Mm. Doing exactly the little things the Lord pleases on your heart. So the people will go with that feeling of We've been able to fetch Peter. Yes. So but the Lord been. has done the work. And the community in Jaffa or Joppa did not let Peter go alone. No. They accompanied him. It was a strange mission. Very strange. 
Yes, of course. Peter had a vision alone. Can you follow somebody's vision, trusting that it is God who is leading? You know, it's not every day that you have to have meeting. You don't need to have meeting on everything. Mm. At times, the Lord will direct. He won't direct everybody. He will direct one. one. And we all have to join in. But I'm very sure they I were able to admit that Peter was right. And they followed Peter simply because he has been consistent trustworthy. Mm. Uh, he was not taking advantage of the community. Mm. So much so that when he spoke, they would know this absolutely is God's will. And it is worthy of our following. And they journeyed with him to the community. So let's go to the house and see what will happen. <laughs> Verse 24. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his kinsmen and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons guarded, and he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked them why you sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was keeping the ninth hour of prayer in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright appeal, saying, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner, by the seaside. So I sent to you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore, we are all here present in the sight of God, to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. I mean, does this person need preaching? Not at all. He had the words already. <laughs> and, no, uh, I get <laughs> frightened eh? when you look at these lives that were so pursuing Jesus. Hmm. And then we look at our lives that we think we know Jesus. <laughs> no, look at the irony. <laughs> look at this Cornelius trying to now discover Jesus. Praying he, he himself mentioned, I was keeping the ninth hour prayer. Meaning he was only observing a religious rule. Mm -hmm. Now, how obedient are we to the normal religious rules of the church? Mm. We are not Jews, we are Kalis. And we have our own rules as Kalis. Is that not the case? Yes. Because we also have yes. rules. We have the, uh, the precepts of the church. How you don't even know if we are even conscious of it. And we have been told to attend holy mass on sundays and on all holy days of obligation, obligation. do you observe it mm -hmm. we are supposed to fast and abstain at length do you do it we are supposed to confess our sins regularly minimum once a year do you do it we are supposed to receive the holy eucharist most importantly during easter we are supposed to cater for the needs of our priests and ministers. We are supposed to observe the processes in connection with marriage. Do we obey these simple rules? Mm. Your local community has set simple rules. Days for adoration, days for devotions, days for masses, late week, catechetical week. It was in the context of this normal daily affairs that the Lord revealed himself to Cornelius. Mm. 
It was not in the presence of a powerful minister who is coming to the parish for a five days revival. You know, many Christians and Catholics now have limited our spirituality to revivals yeah. and crises. So there's banner and flyers all over, everywhere. Five days revival at left, five days revival at right, five days revival at center, five days revival at east, at west and north. And people are chasing this stuff. But the revelation of the Lord comes through our obedience to the normal structural elements of the church. And that is what Cornelius confesses to Peter. That I was at a 3 o'clock p.m. prayer. And then the Lord gave me a revelation. And I obeyed and came in. And I came to fetch you. Then on the level of Peter. He comes. He knows he's the Pope. He knows he's the leader of the church. The body of Christ. Mm. Then he tells Cornelius. I am a common person like you. Mm. I don't need to be given a special treatment. treatment. Now ministers are refusing ministry because the church is not giving them special treatment. <laughs> Peter is refusing special treatment so that he can serve in humility and obedience. I don't know how we can deal with it. How can we untack the special tag on our priests our religious and our bishops. How can we untack that special attack? <laughs> untack that special attack. How can we undo it? No, it is a serious problem that if God does not help us, it will lead many of us to hell. We are more than Jesus. Look at the titles. Hmm. And as I mentioned titles, we think it is the other brothers in other churches who are Rashi in for titles. Bishop, prophet, doctor, doctor, chief evangelist, his holiness. But we in the church are craving for the same. People want to be acknowledged. But John told us he must increase. So that we decrease. So that we decrease. What is happening? How can a, a reverend minister be angry that he was not addressed properly? Am I your co-equal? <laughs> Are we on the same pedestal? Yes. All of us were saved by the same blood. All of us received the same speeches. Mm. The, 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 the wheat that is used for making the host for father is the same wheat used for making the host for Barbara. Mm. In the same cup we share. We share the same cup. We are all firstborns of Jesus. We are all joint heads with the Lord. And both among clerics, even in the clerical state, we have demarcations. I am very reverend father. I am reverend monsignor. I am, yes, it is good. It is beautiful. The Lord is exalting you. It is great. You thank the Lord for that. But why should you be happy with Pope Peter? He never called himself Pope. He never called himself His Holiness. He never gave himself a title. And when people were bowing to him, he told them, don't do that. Now, when people come to us, we want to teach them how they should treat us. And people want to teach people the protocol for meeting a bishop. The protocol for meeting a priest. The protocol for meeting a cardinal. Now, the protocol for meeting a church president. The protocol for meeting a catechist. And somebody get angry because he didn't give me my right address. How? May he forgive us. Amen. And when they enter... Cornelius is straight to the point. He narrates what he saw, making no mention of his religiosity. Not at all. No mention of his charitable acts. No mention of his past life. He only narrates what the Lord told him to do and presented that to Peter. Peter. You are not important because you are able to narrate the important things you have done. Mm. CVs are important for getting work in the world. They are irrelevant in the kingdom business. God does not need your CV for anything. Mm. And the preaching of Peter will not change the course of the CV of Cornelius. Now when Peter entered the house, what did he see? He saw a whole lot of people. Uh -huh. uh, when the house was full. With people invited by uh, Cornelius. Cornelius. Now remember I told you Cornelius was an army commander. Mm. 
Yes. Peter didn't get there to see security apparatus. No. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this is being revealed to us. Yo. Humility. 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 The Lord says he exhausts those who humble himself. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. This is the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. Mm. No, if we are poor in spirit, if we are poor in heart, the pure in heart will see God. God blesses us. Yesterday, I told them at Holy Cross in Zimbabwe, we were having a five days program, they were laughing. I told them that they should work and get dirty because our father in faith, Abraham, mm. was a shepherd. Now, many of our people are even becoming poor because of arrogance. This work does not suit me. I am a graduate. I am this. I am that. And out of arrogance, we are becoming poorer. Mm. But Peter shows us humility. Cornelius shows us humility. In a normal diplomatic sense, Cornelius should be at the chamber. There should be the commander-in-chief at the house who will meet Peter at the gate through one of the bodyguards. Then Peter will be escorted to the main hall, be offered some drinks and food, and then when he's comfortable, led by two other bodyguards, Cornelius will come forth, sit in a very powerful chair, cross his legs, and start the encounter with Peter through an interpreter. Mm -hmm. I beseech those whom the Lord has blessed mm -hmm. with material blessings to be humble to ministers of God. Mm -hmm. Let us accept the fact that having material wealth is not everything. And that is why we are told if there is no heaven, then our preaching is useless. Mm -hmm. If there is no eternity, like the woman who served Jesus, let us be ready to serve Jesus with our substance. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. We want to look at Verse Peter's 34. speech. Verse 34. Yes. And Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I perceived that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the word which he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. The word which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him manifest, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look at how Peter presents the message. Hmm. He didn't start by saying, I am Peter. I was rich like you are, hmm. working as a fisherman at the seashore. I was the first fisherman to have given my boat to Jesus in ministry when he came on earth. I was the first in my village to have taken Jesus home after his ministry in the synagogue hmm. one day. I was the first Peter, Jesus ministered healing to people in my house. Then, when I became his follower, I was given charge to become head <laughs> of the community. So you are lucky to have invited the Pope himself. So today you'll be touched. You will be blessed. You'll be empowered. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that was not Peter's approach. Not at all. He presents the charisma, the 
the, the word of life without any reference to his personality, to his achievements, mm. and to his titles. It, it doesn't matter whether I am known or not. Jesus must be known. Mm. Then he's presenting this message to a community that is not recognized by the Jews because they have not received circumcision. No. So there was a church not recognized by the system that be and yet recognized by the Lord mm. and highly praised by him. And that is what I want to draw attention to. As we read, we read, then we read the last bit and I'll come back to what we just read to put the two scenarios together as we wrap up for the day. Okay, 44. Yes. While Peter was still saying this, the Holy Spirit fell on all who had the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone forbid water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked him to remain for some days. <clears throat> so look at the last narrative you can deduce from it that they didn't have intention of going there for baptism. No. They were just going because God has told them to go and preach. And the impression was that this would be a substandard Christian body. A second class believers <laughs> of a sort. And then the Holy Spirit surprised them. <laughs> it's so funny. You look at the way the Holy Spirit surprised them. Hmm. He didn't allow imposition of hands. The apostles had to wait for nine days in the upper room. Yes. After journey with Jesus for three years <laughs> before they received the power. Holy now people had to come to Jerusalem for the peace of Pentecost. Prepare themselves for a whole week. <laughs> get ready for the feast on the Sunday and then hear the noise in the upper room. Then get there to listen to what is happening and then receive baptism. Cornelius only had a vision. Mm. The following day he's receiving he's baptism. baptism. Fast track. <laughs> Quicker. Faster, more efficient, more potent than what the apostles even received. Mm. Yes, there will be formal ways of doing things. But the Lord is not limited to formalities. Mm. Mm. He has power over laws, not just over sin and death. That is why, whilst he was on earth, he could walk on the sea without respecting the law of flotation. That is why he could jump to the skies without res re 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 respecting the law of gravity. That is why he could calm the storm without re respecting the, the law of the uh, wind direction. He has power over nature. Mm. He could multiply bread to a multitude of people without res re respecting the law of demand and supply. He is God over everything. Mm. Even God over systems and laws. So this makes us know that we can't sit in our church and undermine any other Christian. Mm. God shows no, no partiality. partiality. And he gives his power without ration. Mm. The Jews that journeyed with Paul are shocked. They are surprised. They are worried. They are confused. They are everything because God has chosen to do what they never imagined. So just imagine, ministers from Joppa comes in with an agenda. God decides to do the contrary. Yes. And they yield to it. Mm. They didn't keep to script. This is the notes I prepared. How to deliver it all. You know, at times we, we, we stress people too much. Some of us ministers, we go for ministration, we want to finish the whole thing before we let them rest. That's not fair. Then, other thing is that we want it to be done our own way. But there should be the openness to the Holy Spirit at every stage, mm -hmm. at the course of ministry and at the course of service. And we should be ready for divine surprises. 
To be frank, if the church does not experience periodic divine surprises, then there may be something wrong with our relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is God, deeper than all of us, knowledgeable than all of us. So if he does not do stuff that are strange, eh? strange things happen. When God messes with us, you remember that song? Strange things happen. When God messes with us, great and beautiful, wonderful things, great things happen when God messes with us. So that is, and that should be the expectation of every garden of believers. Mm. You should not just go in because it is time for Laos, it is time for Vespers, it is time for Mass, it is time for Rosary, it is time for this, it is time for that. We should be ready for divine surprises. Mm. And we should even pray for them. That we should be surprised by the Lord. And when that is done, and when that happens, the will of the Lord will be accomplished. So at the end, the people in the house of Cornelius has become Christians without becoming Jews. Yeah. Though the Christians in Jerusalem were expecting people to become Jews first, they become Christians at the end. So that like Cornelius, if you don't want to be circumcised, then you cannot be saved. Mm. The Lord is telling us today that leave your culture to your culture. Mm. Give people the chance to serve the Lord. Let me make a funny comment as we end. Have you seen the pictures of Jesus that is hanging in houses? Yes. His hair star. <laughs> <laughs> Have you consciously observed the hair star? All stars. The hair star of Jesus. Yes. Is he with a sweat like mine? No, no, no. What is it? Like That's a pen. Yes. Pemmed. Yes. Now, in your normal consciousness, if you meet a priest with a pemmed hair, <laughs> <laughs> what will be your reaction? Father mm. Ayala. Father is lost. <laughs> but Jesus' image has been in our rooms for thousands of years. And nobody has complained that Jesus has pemmed his hair. <laughs> and we are even happy to say he's beautiful, he's handsome, he's great. I only wanted to draw attention to the fact that I don't have to be you before I have to be saved. Mm. And God does not base salvation on your preferences. God is the determinant of the steps to salvation. Amen. Amen. Indeed, God shows no partiality. Thanks for joining us today. Do not call anything that God has created as cleansed and clean or common. Humility is very vital in our day-to-day -day activity and in our journey. God bless you, our lovely viewers, for being with us. Support us so that we can spread this message on 055555. 4230. appreciate everything your likes your comments god bless you so so much and may he continue to give you the grace that will be able to follow us each and every time so we'll take our concluding prayer yeah last week a brother was so much worried on the platform that we're using english Please, this is an English program because the audience is the whole world. So we apologize to you, but unfortunately we cannot change the language. So just help Mama at home and translate the letter you can to her and pray that she will be able to understand. <laughs> pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to journey with us through your word. Like Cornelius, we are ready to learn new things. We are ready for the next step. We are ready for your surprises. Like Peter, we want to serve wherever you lead us mm. and whatever you want us to do. 
Give us your grace and your mercies and abide with us. Journey with us in our daily tasks and daily affairs and deliver us from the evil one. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. See you the same time next week. It's bye for now. Set for free.